Hello everyone and welcome to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly give or take update on the various miniatures painted for the various games we cover here on the channel, 99% of which done with Citadel contrast paints with a little bit of washes and whatnot mixed in and we've got a large chunk of Marvel Crisis Protocol today including my most dreaded thing, scenery and then a very eclectic little bundle in the middle here we've got Star Wars Legion, Blood Bowl and Curse City, uh, with Warhammer Quest Curse City and then to finish off a nice big chunk of a Batman miniature game. So my abhorrence for painting scenery is probably uh, no secret at this point and this is a pretty good example of that because this is a car that came in the core box for Marvel Crisis Protocol which of course released wait, a year and three months ago roughly at this point. So I, I finally got this because done because I found my blue spray paint. So this wasn't painted with contrast in the sense of the the uh, the actual just base coat because contrast looks garbage on large flat surfaces of which this has a lot. So this was just, as you can probably tell by the base, slapped onto a stick, sprayed blue, but afterwards I, I did use contrast and washes for the rest of it, which I'm hoping is in focus. A little bit of lead belter for the front Gracier for the light, Yand and Yellow. I can't really, I think it's Kalgar Blue for the windscreen with no oil over the top to give it that kind of dirty look. In the cracks as well to add a little bit of definition at distance. And Blood Angels Red Contrast for the brake lights. So it got done. There's still one more car from that core set and it's a taxi. I don't have yellow spray paint. I guess I have black. I could make it look like a London cab, but it's designed like an American one. So I don't know. But that's been a bugbear, that's been sitting waiting to be sprayed and I finally found my blue spray paint so I was like sure I'll do it and then I discovered why I lost my blue spray paint, it's because it leaks. Almost irreparably damaged my uh, carpet. But anyway, so we have the Heroes for Hire and then the new Cabal on the street. So we have Luke Cage first of all. I like Luke Cage, mostly because of a Netflix show. I've read a few comics with him in it but never like super important characters. I like the guy that got to play him in the Netflix show. I would love if he played him in the cinematic universe at some point. And I like the model, just showing off his strength, his his confidence. So this is Space Wolf's Grey, which again is the most perfect uh, denim color you can possibly get in my opinion. Yand and Yellow for his trademark yellow shirt. Some lead belter silver with dry brushed Morn Fine Brown to give it a kind of rusty look. And Basilicanum Grey for the base. Looking forward to getting him on the table just because I'm a fan of Luke Cage. Dragon Fist on the other hand, Iron Fist, sorry, not Dragon Fist, although he has a Dragon Fist. Uh, you know, Danny Rand. I wasn't looking forward to this because of the dragon tattoo on his chest, which looks more like a bat symbol with the way I've done this. I was hoping the contrast in the washes would sink in more, and they didn't, which didn't leave me much room, wiggle room to do anything else with him. It's Militarum Green that I used for his, whatever his pants are called, the, the garb he's wearing. And then again, it's just Yand and Yellow for the yellow parts of his armor or clothing and the dragon that he is summoning from his iron fist to slam into the ground for his huge attack. I quite like the dynamic pose. Uh, side note though, I have actually seen a really, really impressive looking third party 3D printed sculpt for Iron Fist that is so much better than this one. Uh, I don't know if I care enough about the character to get it, but I did see it kicking around um, Etsy, I think it was. It looked really impressive. It looked a lot better than that. Anyway, from the new Cabal lineup, we have S uh, Red Skull's daughter, Sin, Cynthia Schmidt. Kind of made her look a bit too Harley Quinn slash Joker with trying to pick out her teeth because she's got a big grin on her face, but not too bad. The Griffhound Orange for her hair, she is a redhead and then Blood Angels Red for her armor picked out with Black Templar as well and a little bit of lead about her silver for the buckles, guns and her knife and a little bit of blood for the Blood God in the base just because she is insane and likes murdering people. So she's a little bit weaker than Red Skull uh, but she is going to be in the next battle report so we'll see how she does as a leader of the cloud because her Red Menace I think it's called something like that, her, her leadership ability is just it's pure chaos <laughs> she like the red skull as evil as he is he likes order and and protocol and whatnot she's just nuts so the other one that came in the sin box was a viper a character whom i know nothing about 
And I think not since the Vision miniature have I been so disappointed in a paint job I gave a Crisis Pro Call Mini. I'm actually okay if she never goes into focus. Not a particularly stellar miniature anyway. Uh, I used a mixture of Warp Lightning and then also Tesseract. No, what's it called? The the new detail paint that Games Workshop made for Necron glowy bits. I'm blanking on the name. I used the same on the Blood Bowl miniature we're going to be looking at shortly. But I used that for her because she's two-tone green and I didn't want to use Militarum green because I didn't think it would gla uh, not clash, the opposite of clash. I didn't think it would blend as well. In hindsight, I probably should have. She would have looked a little bit duller, but I think it would have looked better. It's a bit too neon, so I messed up. It happens. She's not exactly an important miniature, so I'm not too fussed. But don't expect to see a lot of her. Much like you don't see a lot of Vision in the battle reports on the channel, which is a shame actually, because Vision's fun, but I am somewhat ashamed of the paint job I did on that, and the same can be said for her. So speaking of the weird cluster of miniatures, or at least one of them, let's cover that. So, I was test painting a Skaven Gutter Runner for the Skaven Blood Bowl team. So I was experimenting with a few different things, including using more of that Necron neon paint, because they have very luminous glows. The suggested painting colour to use is Moot Green, which is fine, I've used Moot Green a lot in the past. I wanted them to stand out a little bit more, that's why I went with the neon kind of look, with a wash over the top. The rest of it is done with contrast, like the contrast pink and the Blood Angels Red, Black Templar, etc. The base has more of that Necron colour on it, and then the Mordant Earth texture paint over it, which sadly I had barely any left of, so it hasn't really cracked properly, but I want it to look like Skaven Warpstone, so... That's the look I'm going for with them. I'm quite happy with this, <clears throat> pardon me, with this style. So I think I'm going to stick with that as I slowly, again, over many months, start building up yet another Blood Bowl team to start including. And if you aren't aware, there is a league running. I've actually just noticed, oh yeah, that's. I was wondering why there's a gap there, but that's the hole for the ball. I didn't fully cover it, so it shows you, again, just how little more than earth I have. I have more now, though. I ordered some more. And then, another zombie from Curse Day. I have nothing to say about Curse Day particularly, nor anything about this zombie. It's exactly the same as two more I've painted, and I used the exact same methods as I've previously talked about. I like the miniatures, I love the zombies that come in the box. I love that they're like staked to their own graves and are becoming tree people or something. But in Curse Day in general, it's not in a good place. So, finally, for the miscellaneous stuff from Star Wars Legion. Two more Stormtroopers, but these ones are equipped with, I think they're called DTTs, or DDT, I, I don't remember. It's the heavy weapon guys of the standard Stormtrooper squads. You have to buy the upgrade, and then they bring this big blaster in. I'm not sure quite how it differs, you roll better dice. But uh, if you want to go and want me rather to go into detail about how I've painted Stormtrooper white, I did that last time I covered just the basic Stormtroopers, did the exact same thing here exactly the same including how to do the base but just knocking out more of the empire side of one of the starter sets it's the star wars legion very slow getting through that but that's more so just because i'm enjoying painting the miniatures for it than i am being like oh i have to play this game immediately because it's been out for a while so you know it's not going anywhere it's just the miniatures i'm enjoying at the moment and i have like a bunch of character packs for it that i want to get to again not because oh i will definitely field them but just because i like them so finally this time we have a huge chunk from the Batman Miniature game starting with the very garish yellow outlined three cat markers that go with the third edition Catwoman who's right there. I made them garish and stand out-ish purely because these are suspect markers within the context of the game and for the purposes of recording it's nice to have them standing out so that you know where they are because instead of normal suspect markers she puts down these little clusters of three cats. and. As long as one of them is down, if she dies, she can just appear next to one of these cats. And she does not die, because she uses up one of her lives, her nine lives. The cat disappears after that, but it's a very neat concept. She has some very interesting, like, unique gameplay mechanics specific to just her. Like, just this version of Catwoman, not every Catwoman that exists in the game. So these are just for her, and how she works with them. And her, uh, I think her unique objective card as well requires them. Not super keen on the actual big base Catwoman that they did, just because the base has so much. Oh, ever get in focus? It has too much blank space. If it was like literally littered with jewels and such to pick out, I think it'd look a little bit better. 
it's mostly just Black Templar contrast. Um, the sacks are just grey sear with Agrax Hershade over the top and Warp Lightning for the stacks of cash going around her. The official paint job had like the cats a few different like tabby colours and whatnot, but I decided to make them all black cats because that's what I associate with Catwoman, plus it's easier. But uh, less excited about this miniature in general, more excited to see it perform on the table again just because of the unique mechanics that are specific to just her. So from Gen Con 2018, I believe, a miniature I've had sitting for a while, a lesser known DC character, this is Grifter, immense psychic capabilities and telekinesis and and what have you, but he also opts to just use guns. He's actually exceptionally dangerous on the table. And uh, pretty neat miniature. War Blinding for his cape, Blood Angels Red for his mask and gloves, Snakebite Leather for his trousers along with Wildwood for his boots. And uh, what colour did I use for his ammo belt? I think I used Nasdrag Yellow and then Agrax or Shade over the whole thing. It's a very killy miniature despite being Batman affiliation and not to be trifled with it. As I say, his, his immense psychic powers actually do have rules and he can do some pretty nasty stuff. And then if you want goofy stuff, well that's why we have Calendar Man. Classic Calendar Man. Like 70s or 80s Calendar Man. Oh, here we go. I, I wasn't going to get this but then I picked it up cheap in a sale from the Top Hatted Hamster. So, because he's so goofy. Like he kind of, kind of crosses that goofy line. But then I do also have Polka Dot Man, so, you know, what can you say? Blood Angels Red, Grey Seer for all the papers and such. Silicanum Grey with Nazrag Yellow for the giant clock he's standing on. It actually turned out quite a neat miniature. I like how detailed it is. He is goofy. I try my best to write numbers on the calendar pages he's tossing away, but it's, it's quite difficult. Same with the cape of paper he's wearing, which is apparently a thing. And he has some, again, very unique mechanics. If you use them in the game, you have to keep like cumulative score for both sides. And his buffs differ depending on the toll, which is to represent the passing of time, I guess, or the, the, the seasons. And then finally, not much to say about these two. I posted a picture of these two on Twitter. Year One Gordon and then Year One Detective Flass. Year One Gordon didn't turn out as nicely as I would like. But again, he is a pretty basic miniature. Good stats on the field for his point cost, I feel. But nothing fancy, miniature-wise. At least Flass is looking angry. He's over here looking like uh, Eddie Brock. With a baseball bat, just ready to smack Gordon upside the head. Although Gordon gets the better of him. And again, the Space Wolves grey with Agra's Earth Surge over the top is just perfect denim colour. Like it is 100% perfect denim. Exactly the same as on uh, Luke Cage's as we talked about at the start there. He's wearing a Gotham High, um, what do you call it, jacket, football jacket, whatever these are called, because that is the period of his life he never grew out of. Gordon puts him in line though, which is great. And he can be a Batman miniature crew, or he can go into organized crime because he's a crooked cop, which is an interesting gameplay mechanic. So that is it. That is another two weeks or so worth of miniatures. Be sure to show me what you've been painting on Twitter, at GamerEND. I try and like and retweet and whatnot everything I can to my followers. Even if it's a game I don't cover, I don't mind. I just like seeing painted stuff and to help encourage people to get into it and enjoy it more so. Don't like force yourself through it, but enjoy it. In two weeks or so, what will we see from me? We definitely have more Crisis Protocol working through the X-Force releases as we speak. I believe the new Spider-Man releases are coming on their way in like the next few days, so there's a lot more Crisis Protocol to come. I'm, I'm very into painting those miniatures right now because they're usually a joy to paint. Got some more Batman stuff as well, still waiting for the Black Mask releases which are delayed despite apparently Night Models claiming that if they don't put cards in the packs anymore they'll be quick to, quicker to release, which um, I have some choice words about that but none that can be said on a, a safe for all ages channel. But we'll probably see some Batman stuff regardless. Working my way through Miscellaneous Blood Bowl and Star Wars Legion as well. And who knows what else. Let's leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching. Get your miniatures painted. It's fun, it's enjoyable, it's calming, it's relaxing and all that other good stuff. See you in two weeks. Ta-ta for now.